Oftentimes when we do an install, we get asked to set up scan to email. And a lot of times, especially in small businesses, they don't host their own email or uh, they have a third party that hosts the email or the email services isn't available to them uh, because it's restricted by another entity uh, that doesn't allow scanning through their email server. So oftentimes we have to create a free Gmail account for the customer to use uh, so the machine can scan. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Well, we're going to touch on some other uh, aspects of scanning using Office 365. Uh, so if you're wanting to set your machine up to be able to scan to email, uh, this, this video should be quite helpful for you. So I'm going to pull up my VM here. And uh, what I want to show you first is uh, when, when we ask you what your email information is to set up for a copier, uh, we're not asking for email addresses that you're wanting to send to. We're asking for what's called the SMTP information that the copier will use to send the emails out. So the copier has its own email address, its own email account that it will take those documents and send them out to somebody else through this account. Now you could use your own email account. So if I have uh, uh, my Braden Online email account, I could actually go in there and use that account to send documents out and it would appear that it comes from me. Uh, Typically, people don't like that. So uh, we'll uh, usually create a Gmail account that has some reference to the company in the email address. So before I go any further, I wanted to just kind of highlight this information here. So if you're currently using Office 365, this is the information that we typically require. If you're currently using Gmail or G Suite, this is the information we require. Okay. So let's talk about Gmail. Some of the benefits of Gmail is that uh, because you're using Gmail, you can keep track of the jobs that are sent. It keeps a record in your sent folder of the emails that's gone out and the attachments. So you're always able to pull those up and actually see the date and time that uh, the email is sent. The other thing is that it's free. So you can set the account up and get scanning and uh, get going for free. Disadvantages? Well, it's free. You get what you pay for. So if there's a problem or any kind of issue, you're not going to get support from Google to fix it. Uh, the other thing is you have a five gig or I'm sorry, 15 gigabyte limit on storage. So if you send a whole lot of scans, eventually your folder could get full and your emails will stop and you'll have to go into the account and clean all that out. And, uh, and sometimes that could take, uh, quite a bit of time to do so. In my account, it's kind of hard to see right now. Um, I have uh, 0.49 gigabytes or 3% of the 15 gigabytes used that I have for this particular account that I'm showing you here. But in this, if I go to the sent folder, uh, scans that have been sent recently are here archived so I can actually see uh, where they went to and uh, which which uh, files actually went to those people. Now, setting up a free Gmail account, uh, you don't get the domain for your company. So if I'm ABC company and I want to use a free Gmail account to send uh, scans, it will be uh, ABC company scanner at gmail.com, not scanner at ABC company.com unless you have a G Suite that, that you're, uh, you know, like a business Gmail account. And if that's the case, those settings aren't going to apply that we're going to talk about here. So you got to keep that in mind. 
But let's say, okay, we want to go ahead and create a Gmail account. We want to be able to send uh, emails from the copier. We're going to look at uh, how to basically do that. This account is already created. If you want to create a brand new account, you would just simply go to gmail.com and create a new account and walk through the steps in setting up that account. It's going to require you to have a cell phone so they can send you a code to confirm your identity and all that and to set up management. Once the Gmail account is created, there are some security things we need to take care of to make sure that the copier is able to use that account. And we're going to look at those right now. So once you're in your Gmail account, if you go to your account settings, and here we're going to click and go to Google account. And we're going to go to security settings. A uh, couple things to bear in mind. If you're currently using the account that you created uh, for your phone to sign in, that's not going to work. And also, if you use two-step verification, that's not going to work either. The copier has no ability to use these methods. Okay, so if you're currently uh, using your Gmail account and you're using to access uh, emails and stuff on your phone and you think, I, I would like to use the same account for the copier, uh, unless you change the way you sign in, uh, through your phone or your computer or whatever other device you might be using, it's not going to work. So best practice is if you want to scan to, scan to email using a Gmail account is to create a brand new account specifically for the copier. So you'll have to have these two categories turned off. Okay. And then we're going to scroll down to less secure app access. This has to be on. If this is off, the copier cannot use this account. So you need to turn this on, and you're probably going to get a warning. You're probably going to get an email that says, oh, we found a security issue. We need you to fix this, and they're going to have you click a link, and it's going to turn this back off. If you do, the copier can't use it. So uh, let me overemphasize that you have to have less secure app access on. Otherwise, the copier cannot use the account. Okay? So once you have that all set, you should be good to go. So we're going to go back to, uh, we're going to minimize this here, and we're going to look at this information here. This is what we have for Gmail. So the account that you created... In this case, I'm using my personal uh, uh, email, bbsspecialist at gmail.com. That's going to be the user account, and the password I use for that Gmail account is going to be the password. Okay, so we would enter that information into the copier. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a copier to show you uh, this exact setup. But I do have a copier pulled up so I can show you where to put the information. And this current copier is set up using our business account. So I'm going to log in. In this case, it's a Konica Minolta BISHUB C308. I'm going to go into admin mode. And the default password for Konica Minolta machines is 1 through 8 two times. If that password is incorrect, you'll need to contact your IT or manager to find out what they've changed that password to. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we're going to go into the system settings. And in Konica Minolta machines, they require this information to be filled out. So what you're most interested in is we were using my personal Gmail account, I would put the legitimate account here. So it would be bbsspecialist at gmail.com, and I would put the same thing here. This information is not necessary. We have it in this machine just because it helps us to identify that machine. But the email address for the administrator would have to be your Gmail address and the email address for the 
machine has to be your Gmail address. Once you have that information in, you click OK. And then we're going to go into the network settings of the machine. So we're going to go to network. And we're going to go into the email settings. And we're going to do SMTP. And again, this is going to be an Office 365 setup here. The only major differences between Office 365 and Gmail is this would be smtp.gmail.com. These settings would stay the same. Here would be listed the Gmail address. So in my case, it would be bbsspecialist.specialist at, at uh, gmail.com. Same thing here. I would check the SMTP authentication. And here's where I would put in my login for my Gmail. So I would have been putting the bbs.specialist at gmail.com. I would check this box and enter my password for my Gmail. And then I would click OK and the settings would be good to go. Okay, so if you're using an Office 365 account and you happen to be watching this video, this is how you do it. This is uh, uh, exactly how you would put the information in here, except for this would be your email address that you're using for the copier. And then you would come down and check your authentication and enter that information here for your account name and your password. Okay, so when we're done, we're going to log out. Click OK. So once you have that all set up, if you go back into the public access part, here's where you can start entering the addresses for the people you want to send to. So if I click Store Address, and do New Registration, I can now enter my uh, button or the buttons for whoever you want here. I'll select email and we'll put uh, Jim here. We're going to select the index value for the um, address. We're going to go ahead and put it on the main screen and then I'm going to put in my address. Okay, and then click OK. So now my email address is on this machine and I'm able to scan to email to my email address. And that should be it. Again, um, Gmail and Office 365 are the most common. If you don't use either one of those, uh, it could be something you're going to have to reach out to your IT department to get the necessary information. Uh, sometimes they use what's called a relay, it's where you don't even have to have a username and password. It just gives a, an address and uh, a port to direct the traffic through. So there's, there's uh, other factors to take into account for uh, setting up scan to email. But this is the basics. This is if you have a small business or, uh, again, you don't have uh, the ability to get the email information, you want to use a Gmail account, this is uh, the best way to get it done. If you have any questions, let us know. We'd be happy to help you out any way you can. You can shoot us an email or comment below. Thank you and have a good day.